uh, this uh, online workshop on the fundamentals of uh, RF filter design. Uh, today we'll discuss about the basics, the basic characteristics of filter. What is a filter? What are the types of filters we have? What are the design methodologies? And then what is a lump filter? And what is a distributed component filter? And how we can realize this uh, two categories of filters here? Will it be a lump or distributed? How to realize filter for the design? Frequency response we are going to discuss now. So today will be overview of all these points, and tomorrow we'll be having a, a demonstration with that RF electromagnetic tool. We we'll take up some design examples, and then. Uh, we'll design for a required uh, specification. We'll uh, design a lump filter and then a distributed component filter using microstrip mine. So third day, we'll go with uh, a band pass and uh, band stop filter design. Right. So as the topic is RF filter design, first uh, we should uh, be clear with uh, what is the radio frequency range actually. Okay? So uh, if you look at this picture, generally the mahertz range from 30 mahertz itself, we used to term the uh, waves as uh, RF waves actually. So right from 30 mahertz itself, we, we consider is a RF uh, wave and all circuits uh, which we have to design for that particular range are termed as RF circuits. Okay. Right. Okay. So right from 30 mahertz uh, up to uh, three GHz, we commonly use the term RF, and then beyond the three GHz, we term them as microwaves. And nowadays, you see, uh, we have moved on uh, using millimeter wave transceivers. So the research is uh, being carried out, and even products are coming out in the millimeter wave frequency band that covers uh, 30 to 300 GHz frequency range. Okay. So right from 30 itself, we have to apply the concepts of uh, RF circuit design. Uh, but when you come to this uh, microwave range, 3 GHz, uh, lump component design would not be possible. For example, 30 to 300 mahertz, it is possible to, even up to 1 GHz, it is possible to uh, design uh, circuits, passive circuits with lump components like uh, the discrete SMD component that's available. But if the frequency is beyond uh, 1 GHz, uh, we have to go for distributed components to realize filter such. Okay. So this is a point to remember. And why generally you design at uh, frequency? Uh, I put here a capacitor, right? So the capacitor at the low frequency, we just uh, consider only this value of capacitance in the analysis of the circuit, right? But uh, when you are analyzing a circuit at the RF frequency, they take from 30 mahertz itself, the equivalent uh, of the capacitance would be a resistance as well as a inductor. The leads, the leads from the capacitors will uh, exhibit some resistance as well as inductance. And even this very small values will contribute to the deviation in the circuit performance. You design for some frequency and the circuit performance will be different from that. And even it could lead to losses. When you have resistors, indexes, there could be losses as well. So that's the reason why RF uh, circuits will not be as simple as uh, the low frequency circuits. So we have to uh, uh, put extensive care in answering all these parasitic effects and so that uh, the circuit functions according to your design actually. Okay? And this is the same case for inductor as well. So in, if you take an inductor, that will be containing some series resistance, uh, parallel capacitance and all that, and it could uh, deviate the behavior of the circuit. Okay. So this uh, additional things are called parasitic effect. Okay. Right. So to start with what is a filter? We all know this, a filter is a two-port network and is a frequency selective network. Uh, when you apply some signal, according to your design, the filter passes the design frequency to reach the load and the rest of the signals will get attenuated or completely blocked based on the uh, stop band gain of your filter actually. So the yeah, ideal filter, we prefer to have a rectangular response. It means uh, beyond the cutoff frequency. So the 
uh, other frequency component will put zero output. That's not practically possible, right? So yeah, the, we, uh, a rectangular uh, frequency response or transfer function is only an idle case, and practically it is not possible to realize uh, such a uh, response of a filter. Actually. So always we go for a reasonable uh, approximation. So we can't get exactly that uh, rectangular response, but we can go close to that. So you can always uh, look for a closer approximation to the ideal response, actually. That should be the goal. So what's the difference in this uh, practical response and uh, ideal response is that a practical filter uh, will pass uh, uh, components beyond the cutoff frequency with some lower uh, low, lower attenuation, uh, sorry, with some higher attenuation. So it means that you could find some high frequency component coming to the output, but with lesser amplitude actually. So immediately after cutoff, uh, we'll not get uh, uh, zero output. That's not possible practically actually. Okay. So how the filters are categorized? So based on the frequency response, we have four responses, like high pass, low pass, band pass, and uh, band stop filter. Uh, that's one case. And then we have active filter and passive filter. So active filter uh, could provide some amplification as well. So it means it will employ some uh, active devices, maybe uh, a BJT fit. Uh, more popular active filter is the IC-based, op-amp-based filter. So they can provide some gain along with the frequency, uh, frequency-based response. You uh, get some gain also. That's an active filter. A uh, passive filter could not provide any gain because we use only passive elements like crystal, capacitor, and inductor. So definitely the output uh, will be just equal to your input in the pass band. And beyond that, the output uh, magnitude will get reduced according to the stop band gain of your filter actually. So mostly we prefer using passive filters in the RF and microwave band. And there are different types of filters that are being realized. You can see we use uh, discrete components, uh, capacitors, inductors. And when you move on to higher frequency, 1 GHz and above, we produce uh, transmission line sections. Uh, we'll discuss why we go for transmission line sections instead of uh, inductors and capacitors. Uh, because uh, at the higher, say, I want to design a filter for high GHz, low pass filter, uh, then using some standard uh, uh, guidelines with uh, design uh, equations, we can find out the values of resistor capacitor, that, but their values should be very small and we cannot practically realize that it won't be available in the market as well. Because if you get one nano Henry, you can't go and buy a nano Henry uh, inductor. Similarly, one nanofarad capacitor, if you get that value, will not be available even in the SMD form. Right? So, at higher frequencies, particularly in the micro range um, above 1 GHz, the component dimension size, the component values will be very small, uh, which will not be available practically in the market and it's not manufactured at all. So, uh, how we then we can how we can realize a filter at uh, micro frequency if you say we have to uh, synthesize this components here uh, the low value inductor capacitor and resistor using transmission line itself okay so even in that uh, UHF band people could use section of the coaxial line to realize some value of capacitor and when you come to micro frequency uh, we use microstrip transmission line. Uh, so that will be used to realize uh, the values of resistors, inductors, and capacitors. So that's the reason why you have transmission lines. So we have to go for transmission line sections only to design high frequency filters actually. And resonating structures are also being used nowadays. Uh, surface acoustic wave filter is also, these are all standard structures using which you can design filters mechanical resonators. So that will allow certain frequency and block other frequency. They'll behave like resonant circuits. Okay. So at this point, we have seen active filter may contain some active element like a VJD fit or op -amp. More common is the op -amp based uh, active filters. But coming to the RF uh, frequency range, we prefer using passive filters only. Okay. Right. And if I, you are designing a filter, so how to study its performance, uh, there are different parameters that can be uh, analyzed for a given filter. You design it and find out uh, the transfer function. That's one thing. 
So from the response of the transfer function, we can understand how the filter will behave. Then we can also have a plot of the attenuation factor versus frequency. And then we can have the S parameter, S to one, which is the ratio of the output power to the input power. That's gain actually, it indicates gain. So we can use that. And you can also use that uh, transmission line parameters, ABCD parameters to define or to represent the behavior of the filter you have designed. So uh, there are different, these are different kinds of plots you can generate from a filter. And from the plots, we can understand its behavior actually. All these four conveys the same message about the filter, but in different forms actually. It's all. Okay, so and then based on the frequency response, we know we have four types of filters, right? A low pass filter will have a response, what you see here. So it will uh, allow up to certain cutoff frequency. Beyond that, uh, the attenuation will increase. So the output will gradually come down. And after the transition band, you will not get any output. And this type of response, commonly called as the transfer function, which is the ratio of uh, the output voltage V2 of omega here, represents the output voltage at frequency omega and V1 is the input voltage at frequency omega. So we find out the output and input for various frequencies and then plot it, you'll get uh, the free transfer function response or the gain response we used to say. And apart from this magnitude response, this is actually the magnitude response, magnitude of the output versus frequency omega is that 2 pi f. Okay, that's one thing required. And other behavior that is required to analyze filter is phase response, okay? So how the phase of the signal varies with the increase in the frequency, that, that uh, that's also very important in a filter actually. So a proper filter should provide a linear phase response. It means uh, as the frequency is increased, the, fa out the phase of the output signal should change linearly actually. So the phase response is another factor. Maybe for for audio signals, uh, phase response not a factor because uh, human air is insensitive to phase changes. If there is any phase change in the audio signal, uh, that makes no significance. They will not feel any difference in that. But for other types of signals, say signals coming from out from the sensor and other devices, so phase change is an important factor actually. So these are two characteristics that has to be studied for any given filter, the magnitude response as well as the phase response. The expected one is the linear phase change within the passband. In the passband, the phase of the output signal should change linearly with frequency. So this for the low pass filter. Okay, so here H of omega is complex in the sense the transfer function is complex. It means uh, you have the magnitude response as well as phase. So the output depends upon the phase also. It affects the phase also, that's the meaning actually. And the other plot, if you see the attenuation plot, uh, it is opposite to this uh, transfer function because uh, 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 if you consider attenuation for a low pass filter, at, within the pass band, the attenuation should be minimum, right? In the stop band, the attenuation should be high actually. So this is the way you get a graph when you are plotting the attenuation factor actually. But both convey the same information, whether it is transfer function or it is attenuation plot, both convey the same information, but the graph looks different, but message conveyed is same. Till what frequency it will pass. It means till what frequency the attenuation is less and from what frequency the attenuation will be higher actually. So this other way of uh, getting a plot for a filter, attenuation plot. Similarly, you can plot S21. Uh, as mentioned in the previous slide, you can plot S21 also. That is also conveys the same thing. It's a ratio of output to input power, actually. Uh, okay, this is just an example. Uh, I have a low pass filter, uh, one with a low frequency and one with high frequency. If these two signals are applied to a low pass filter, so at the output, you will get the low frequency signal and the high frequency signal is blocked because the frequency of the high frequency signal is in the stop band of the filter so it won't pass at the pass through the filter and the output you'll not get this uh, high frequency signal at the output side actually this is just an example so suppose if you are a uh, uh, stop band gain you have finite attenuation say for example if the attenuation is infinity then we'll get uh, no signal at all if the attenuation is finite say 10 db 20 db 
uh, there is finite uh, some amount of small amount of signal appearing at the output actually so if it is near this uh, transition band or near the cutoff frequency the output you get for uh, frequencies beyond the cutoff but the magnitude will be very very small actually so this is also a design factor in uh, to be considered in the design of filters what is the stop band attenuation so if you choose a stop band attenuation to be infinity or 1000 db a higher value where nothing will come at the output in the stop band then we need to use uh, a higher order filter actually so the filter design goes complex so we can keep some acceptable uh, attenuation so 20 20 30 would be reasonable that's enough to have practical performance it need not be too high if you keep if you design try to design a filter for attenuation of 100 db then the design goes more complex right? so the feasible thing is 40 to 50 is a limit within that you can design actually so what i'm coming to say here is even beyond the cutoff frequency the some component uh, the, uh, near that uh, cutoff and the transition band it will appear at the output but the magnitude will be uh, very very small and it could be neglected right and the response can be classified into three bands pass band is the range where the filter allows the signal frequency range where the filter will allow all the component to pass through it without attenuation and uh, stop band is where the attenuation will be very high because i won't say zero because practically it is not possible to get uh, uh, infinite attenuation in the stop band that's impossible but it will get negligible amplitude that's uh, that could be guaranteed okay and then the transition band that's a, a small gap between the pass band and stop you can't get a abrupt uh, switching from pass band to stop and always there will be a transition band itself because if you want uh, to get a abrupt transition from pass band to stop band then uh, as i told you the response should be rectangular and you need a higher order of filter 10000 20000 so that's not practically feasible to realize okay then the other category high pass filter which is just opposite to that it will allow the high frequency <laughs> frequency signals and the other two categories is the band stop and band pass filter uh, you know the first one shows the attenuation actually the first uh, uh, graph shows the attenuation second one is the transfer function so uh, from the transfer function i could say it is a band pass filters because from frequency omega 1 to omega 2 uh, the output is higher actually the gain is one it allows uh, the frequencies but be before omega 1 and after the cutoff frequency omega 2 uh, there is no output the gain is very low actually so it's a band pass filter and top of this what you see is the attenuation graph so attenuation is lowest in the mid band and it is higher in the low frequency range and higher frequency so it represents a band pass filter then uh, this one the next one is the band uh, stop filter where it will block the mid range of frequency and allow the low frequency and higher frequency this is also called as a notch filter if the pass band the width is very narrow we even call this as a notch filter a particular frequency can be eliminated and all other things can be allowed at so these are the four uh, categories of filters based on the frequency response low pass high pass uh, you are aware of that but just a revision of that and based on the component we use in the circuit it is active filter or passive filter actually okay? how do we design filter uh, if it is a low frequency circuit i did not to go with any complex method i'll just simply use a formula f equal to 1 by 2 pi rc for a low pass filter or a high pass filter the well formula is the same just f equal to 1 by 2 pi rc i'll choose some cut off frequency and then i'll get the values so if i cascade two such segment i could design a second order filter to increase that uh, roll off rate after the cut off frequency so flow frequency is quite simple a very resistor and capacitors are available i'll simply use a very common rule 1 by 2 pi rc and i can implement that then band stop and band pass also you can implement with the same uh, you can construct a high pass low pass put them together you can make it a band stop or a band pass filter that's possible so at low frequency this uh, filter design is not at all a matter okay uh, but if you uh, consider impedance matching because to connect a filter to a source impedance matching is an 
very important thing. And if you consider that, then we can go for that pi network, T network you have studied, right? So that that should be considered if you are more concerned about the matching, matching between the source and the load actually. If not, this uh, simple RC circuit would be enough. So all this are straightforward. We have the formula applied, we'll get it. We'll get the filter. But coming to microwave frequency, the filter or RF frequency, the filter design is more complicated actually. So the most uh, popular method of filter design is the image parameter method, uh, where it considers uh, uh, infinite uh, infinite uh, cascade of uh, filter sections. And based on that image impedance, it is going to uh, find what is the length of the, how many segments of filter that RLC is, uh, is required. And based on that image impedance, it is going to find out that uh, component values, L and C values actually. So it is uh, image parameter method. And uh, about this, we'll see when you take up a design. Tomorrow we'll be taking up uh, example frequency band. And let us see how to use this method to get the values of that LNC component, how many segments to be used. And then we'll try to realize that. So today, just uh, a overview, right? So this is one method of designing a filter image parameter method. Then the other method is uh, insertion loss method. And this is uh, more popular in the micro filter design actually. Insertion loss method is more popular. Okay. So actually, uh, what is this insertion loss method? It uses uh, polynomial, you know, Kuldos identity we used to call. So it, it uses some uh, polynomials to arrange the values of LC segments. So, and this is uh, better than the image uh, parameter based filter design actually. And Okay, and based on the polynomial you use in this insertion loss method, you could get uh, different types of uh, responses actually. So based on the cutoff frequency, we have four types, uh, low pass, high pass, and uh, band pass and band stop, right? But based on the response, so you take a low pass filter, in low pass filter, filter itself, you could get uh, three types of response. So what is, uh, but I, I forgot to put the graph actually to indicate the difference but I'll give an outline. What is a Butterworth filter is, within the pass band, the gain will be constant. If you design a Butterworth filter within the pass band, the gain will be constant. The gain will not fluctuate. The gain will be constant throughout that pass band. And, but uh, after cutoff frequency, the gain will not reduce abruptly. It, it, there are two approaches for filter design. One is the image parameter method, and the other one is insertion loss method. Insertion loss method is based on a polynomial function and uh, based on the polynomial B. So of this two method, the insertion loss method is, uh, most widely used at the uh, microwave frequency range as well as RF range. So in this case, based on the polynomial we choose, right, we can uh, arrive at uh, three types of response. Okay, sorry, stop. So uh, one is Butterworth response filter, Chebyshev and Bessel function. So in a Butterworth filter, uh, to be simple, the gain of the filter is constant. It won't uh, vary within the pass band. And after the cutoff, the roll off rate, uh, uh, the transition band will be pretty large, actually. It takes more time to switch from the pass band to the stop band. Actually. That's one drawback of that. But the uh, gain is constant and the phase response is also linear actually. The uh, phase variation with respect to the frequency would be linear. That are its uh, advantage. The only drawback is the transition band will be somewhat larger actually. And next one is the Chebyshev filter. And this one we use uh, where you want a abrupt uh, transition from the low pass band to the stop band. So you don't want to allow uh, the, uh, some frequencies beyond the cutoff. You have to restrict it very strictly, then you can go for Chebyshev filter. And what is the problem with this is that uh, the gain will be oscillating. In the sense, the signal fluctuation you could see. For some frequency, the gain will be higher. For other frequency, the gain will be somewhat less. So you could gain, uh, see variation in the magnitude response in the pass band as well as stop band, actually. But the advantage we get is rapid cutoff. So the transition band will be very narrow in this case. And then we have to take care of uh, impedance mismatch also. Uh, it, it's a poor, poor uh, impedance matching network. So we have to take care of this uh, 
order. So if n is even, then the impedance matching characteristics of that field will be very poor. Actually. Then the Bessel function is a uh, good phase response, it's a linear uh, phase response. It's just a moderate thing between the Butterworth and Chebyshev. The widely used one is uh, Butterworth because the uh, gain should be constant in the pass band. That's what indicated. In situations where you need a, a fairly rapid cutoff, then that such situations only we use uh, Chebyshev filters actually. Okay. So what is our scope? What we are going to study is concentrate on the design of uh, LC filters in uh, lump domain as well as uh, distributed domain actually. So we'll see how to design this and how to simulate in the ANSYS software. That's our that will be our focus in the next two days actually. And then you can realize if you are designed a filter, you got the values of uh, ALC is required to implement your filter. It may be any network, pi network or whatever it is that's up to you. You have designed it. Then how you are going to implement it, whether you are going to use a discrete component or you are going to use uh, distributed uh, elements. That's a question here, right? So as I pointed out before, uh, if the frequency is uh, low and the, up to VHF, it is uh, best to go with uh, it's best to go with that uh, lump element filter. Up to VHF, we, people will go with uh, lump element filter. Where you could see in the picture, the uh, inductor is made up of uh, a small coil of wire and capacitors you can buy. Say 10 picofarad, 20 picofarad is what required like, in the VHF me? range, and that will be available mm -hmm. in the market. So that white color button kind of thing you see in this picture. It's a lump capacitor. Hello, sir. And this coil is the inductor, actually. So uh, this network, a pi network of uh, uh, inductor and two capacitors and a capacitor and two inductor, is implemented in this picture with lump element. This is called lump, the physical uh, component that's manufactured is called a... Uh, it's called a lump element, actually. So uh, capacitors we can go and buy because we cannot make it. But inductor we will do. So in our mostly in our circuit design, we'll have some uh, coil making machine, and we use we we have to calculate how turns of watts diameter, and then we use to make coils for our circuit. Still the VHF man. and beyond that, uh, even this will fail. We, we don't work actually. Then we have to go for microstrip man. Right? So the picture you see here is a realization of a filter network with lumped components. So this is how a filter will look like. Uh, then, filter realization using distributed circuit element. Okay, so what is the problem with lump element? The one one factor what I pointed out earlier is at uh, frequencies higher than uh, one gigahertz or two gigahertz, the value of the component will become very small. Say you are designing a pi network for two, three gigahertz, for example. You may require one nano farad, one nano Henry. Uh, that values you cannot buy in the market. You, you just go and search Hello, the market online. You will not find the company. It's not the components are readily not available. It's not sold out. So you have to make, and you have to make this. You cannot really see the pile of wire. Such values you can't make. That's so. That's also ruled out. Then what is the option we are left out is using transmission lines uh, segments. You just uh, use some transmission line and uh, cut it to some length. You make a transmission line of some length and make it to open uh, open, uh, open end or short circuit. Uh, by make it using that, you can realize inductors, capacitors, and other important characteristics as well. I'll show you in the next slides, actually. OK. And then which transmission line will be preferable here? So coaxial cables will be useful till that one yard. So for UHF, you can use coaxial cables. One Sorry, sir. Okay, okay. Now, Alan Mutunaka. Very around. Okay. okay. So some people in waiting. I'm sorry. Okay. So this is our sorry. Uh, hut uh, UHF range. 
300 yards to 1 yards. Uh, you may try using uh, coaxial cables. Uh, you can cut it and use because uh, coaxial cable is a transmission line used at uh, the UHF range. So you can use a segment of that and implement uh, this. Uh, when you come to uh, higher band, one yards and above, uh, we have to go with uh, the micro strip plane actually. Okay. So for micro, not even three, even from one yards, we have to go with uh, the distributed. Element. Okay. So, what you see here is an example of uh, the distributed element. Okay. So, you see a segment of transmission line of uh, length L with karstic impedance either C and uh, the phase factor beta. You will get uh, some inductance, but it is shorted. A short circuited transmission line will behave like a inductor. An open circuited transmission line of certain length. Will behave like a capacitance. So this is the property we use uh, to realize inductors and capacitors using transmission lines. Okay. So you have the input and the output, and in between you don't see any uh, lump capacitor or inductor, just segments of transmission line. So now our job is to design uh, this. How to find out the length of this transmission line? Uh, what should be its width? That's a matter of concern, and we have to do that. Okay. And how it looked like the physics. This is an example, and uh, this is how people normally. These are all examples. Uh, distributed element, a low pass filter, mass pass filters. Okay. So here inductors are realized uh, in the transmission line, and some SMD capacitors are used. If it is available, then you could. Uh, Usage. Okay. And this is all band pass filter. So, uh, drawing this is not a problem actually because it's just segment, segment of band. Very easy to draw in the tool and you can. But uh, the real uh, thing is finding the dimensions, how to find out the width and length of this transmission line segments, uh, even the gap. Okay. So, that is the very challenging thing in the microstrip filter design because making it is very simple just a, a patch of wire you can implement it and randomly put it right in antennas we can try randomly i can make a rectangle patch change the dimension and see how it looks uh, randomly i can go ahead in designing antennas but uh, they kind of coming to filters it's that's not possible so you should have some uh, design ideas and then only you'll be able to make it up so these are all some examples how band pass filters are implemented using a lump uh, distributed elements. Sorry, a band pass and band stop filter, and then there's a low pass and uh, this is some examples. There are different ways to uh, realize it. Okay. And there are some people waiting. I hope you understood what is uh, lump element filter. This is with the discrete components available in the market. And this we can go up to 300 yards. And beyond that, uh, maybe up to 1 yards you can go. If you find some costly components for 1 yards, then you can fight. Beyond that, it is not possible to realize lump components. But the network is same. The filter network design, everything is same. But Realization is the problem. So we go for distributed circuit element that is just seg segments of transmission and lines. Okay? And this is how it's going to be. So you open then the transmission line of length L uh, with some karstic impedance will behave like a capacitor, a short circuit one will behave like an inductor. And then we have to realize the circuit using this. And this is, is an example of distributed filters, distributed element filters. And this is a fabricated one wherein the PCB uh, they have uh, integrated uh, distributed element filters in the PCB itself. Okay? So this is called a hairpin fil filter. It looks like a hairpin, right? Just uh, several segments of hairpin being used. And all these are hairpin filters. So different ways to realize it. So once you know the principle, how the micro strip line will behave like an inductor or capacitor, you can make it in your own way. There's no limitation on that. The shape. Yours. Okay. So, uh, our fundamental thing what we are going to study is uh, design of uh, distributed element. For that, we need the transmission line, right? 
So we will be using microstrip transmission line. Even this structure, the PCB structure is a microstrip transmission line structure, ground plane, conducting plane, and dielectric. And above that, you have another conducting path, right? So uh, this is a PCB structure, actually. So uh, the microstrip line circuits will be more convenient to uh, integrate your fill passive components, passive filters, along with the PCB itself, OK? So this is a microstrip line actually it's a transmission line uh, which will have a conducting ground plane and over that a dielectric substrate and above that we have a small uh, uh, length of uh, patch with some bit narrow narrow bit of patch metal patch you get this structure is called as microstrip line okay it's almost a pcb structure okay and in this what you see the left side is the microstrip line and the right side is uh, uh, strip plane actually where the center conductor is inside the Dielectric actually. Microstrip line. Uh, hello, sir. It will be on the top. The uh, conductor Excuse will be on me, the top, the positive conductor, and the bottom will be the ground actually. So this is a strip line, and this is. Sir, one minute, sir. And they are given the formulas here. This is taken from the reference book, RF and microfilters. So what is what will be the effective dielectric constant? What will be the current? Hello, sir. You know, transmission line very important. Capacity influence. So if you use certain width and sir, height, that, sir, what sir. would be it? Sir, Sukadev, sir. So effective dielectric constant and characteristic impedance are important factor in the design of micro strip line. And then some parameters of uh, importance in uh, filter design because it is related to transmission line. Uh, we must be aware of these four parameters. So lambda G is the guide wavelength. So wavelength in a medium actually. Wavelength in the air is different. That's lambda. So wavelength in a dielectric medium is lambda G because in a micro strip line, the waves travel through the dielectric substrate between the top and bottom conductor. So its uh, guide wavelength will be different from the free space wavelength lambda or not. And it is related to the free space wavelength by the dielectric constant, the effective dielectric constant actually. Okay. And then guide wavelength, you can also compute using this uh, relation. The propagation constant. Propagation constant indicates how the signal will get uh, attenuated and how what would be the phase change when you when the signal travels through that medium so it is proportional to again the guide wavelength and 2 pi is that value constant so propagation constant will, it's an indication of the phase variation as the signal travels through that actually so it's related to phase more uh, phase velocity is the velocity with uh, with which the phase wave frames uh, varies actually the speed of the wave inside the medium that's phase velocity here Okay. Then electrical length, uh, it's also an important factor. So electrical length, it's also called as phase length. That is a product of this uh, propagation constant into length of the transmission line. It's a, uh, a parameter of your transmission line, electrical length or phase length. So what it refers to is, it's the length of the electrical conductor in terms of phase shift introduced by the transmission over the conductor some length. Okay, if I have a transmission line of certain length, what will be the phase shift for, for one meter? What will be the phase shift? So that is indicated by electrical length. Or uh, you can design. I, I want to restrict the phase change within 90 degree. So I have a 10 meter cable transmission line. I want to restrict the phase change to 90 degree in the entire 10 meter length. The phase at the at the end of the 10 meter should not go beyond 90 degree. That phase length I fix at 90 degree. Then based on that also you can design that. Uh, transmission line you'll get different l and uh, w that length and width of that for required electrical length actually okay so it's about the phase change in the line as the signal travels through the line or to be the phase change that's indicated by electrical length so it's important when you are designing your own microstrip because that's what you are going to do you are going to design a microstrip line of special uh, specific length and width so you should also take care of this phase so for that, uh, say one centimeter, how much phase shift you want, so, right? So that you enter and then find out that value of length and width. Okay, right. This is about that. Then how to design a micro? You can use this uh, very complex equation. Instead, you can use here online tool. So if you go to, you know, there's many tools are there. If you go to the CEM top website, you could find a microstrip calculator. So this online tool will help you to calculate the width and length of this micro strip line for given uh, dielectric constant height of that substrate uh, and then 
more important thing is the frequency about the operating frequency and then the electrical length. Now you could see the importance. So even you can design for required phase shift, right? So you give the electrical length 90 degrees. Um, so within that, uh, as you pass the signal, the phase should not change beyond 90 degree, for example. Then you give the length as 90 degree. Then for that, you'll get values of L and W. To give different electrical length, you'll get different values of L and W. So that's all the design of a micro strip line for a given impedance. Is that not? It's quite easy with this tool actually. You'll straight away get this value of L and W. That's all. So uh, by choosing this value of L and W, you can realize a inductor. Uh, tomorrow I'll show you how to realize a uh, inductor, capacitor, resistor. A strip line itself will act, behave like a resistor because it's a conducting patch. So that uh, you can calculate the resistance. If the length is this much, uh, width is this much, what will be the resistance you can calculate. And you could see that you have, a, if you look at the structure, at the top you have a conductor, between you have a dielectric material, at the bottom again you have a conductor. So this inherently has the capacitor, right? So it's very, very easy to bring in capacitance in a microstrip line actually, because the structure itself is a capacitive structure. So you can realize a capacitor. So inductor also you can make that uh, strip width and length will again uh, give the inductance value actually. So design of uh, that we'll see tomorrow in next class. And then uh, we encounter in the design, if you see this filter, uh, they are used gap here, they are used some projection, and uh, then they are used uh, some step here, right? All these are used. So what is the impact of this? Uh, that's called discontinuity actually. This, this, All these are called as discontinuities. So what is the impact of discontinuities in a microchip structure? Uh, just give an overview today. Tomorrow we'll see this. Okay. So uh, this thing, if you, I have a microstrip line, suddenly I'm reducing the width of that line, then what is the impact of this? And then uh, I have open end. I'm just, uh, you could see this open end, uh, this picture. Uh, there is a line, suddenly it is open. So what will be the impact? So these are these are the types of discontinuities we encounter we use in the design of microchip circuits, uh, steps, then the open ends, just we leave it open for certain length, uh, gap you can leave, and then bends we can bring in. What is this uh, important? How they will behave, right? So here you could find the equivalent circuit of that. So a step in the microstrip line is equivalent to uh, two inductors and a parallel capacitor. It is a low pass filter. And similarly, uh, just a open end uh, transmission line will behave like a capacitor and then uh, a small gap between two segments will behave like a capacitive network and then your bend will uh, behave like a high pass filter right so two indexes and one capacitance so what is the equivalent uh, inductance capacitance you, you can all design this no need to use the uh, mathematical i mean uh, in order to compute i'll show you uh, online uh, design tools using which you'll be able to calculate, okay? Because uh, the objective is not to go into deep into the mathematics, but still how to do design with available tools. That's the motive of this workshop. And then uh, if you use a high impedance short circuit line, this one, it's equivalent to inductor and to capacitor. Uh, if you have step on both sides of that, it's equivalent to the opposite behavior, right? So you can, so you now what you understand now is by uh, bringing in discontinuities in the microstrip line, you can very easily implement a filter. A filter is nothing but a LC network in different configuration. So you can use these concepts in the design of filters actually. Okay, so uh, I'll end with this whole thing today. And in the next class, uh, to next, uh, that is tomorrow, we'll take a low pass filter and let us see how to arrive at these dimensions and let us simulate and get the results. And if you are interested in more theoretical thing, you can go with this books, Theory and Design of Microwave Filters. It's a good book, then Circuits and Filters, Handbook by Chen. Uh, these are all wonderful books. Uh, Yang, this, this book should be very much uh, useful actually for you. So I thank you all for sparing your time. And tomorrow- Thank you, sir. We'll Thank you. Go ahead with some. Sir, uh, if possible, questions. send me the PPT. Sir. So any queries you can ask now. Hello.
I'll end this session today with this, and tomorrow Hello. we'll go in detail about the design aspects. Sir, can you hear my voice? If you have any queries, you can ask. Sir, unmute, sir. Please unmute, sir. Yes. Sir, can you hear my voice? Ah, oh, yes, I could. Yeah, you can ask. No, good evening, I'm able sir. to hear you. Hello. Or you can type in the chat. I'll be able to see it. Hello. How? How? I couldn't uh, hear the question clearly. Can you? Sir, how? Uh, how? Hello, am I audible? Ah, yes. So, in filters, do we use mostly Chebyshev or Butterworth? So, I have told you the difference between the two actually. Uh, Chebyshev will have some variation in the gain in the pass band as well as stop band, but the transition will be uh, more fast actually. So, if you want to filter out uh, uh, frequencies beyond the, so I'm, I'm not bothered about the variation in the pass band, but I should not get any frequency beyond the cutoff, right? So, if that is your need, you go for Chebyshev. Uh, but uh, if you need constant gain, particularly audio applications, if you take uh, audio applications, you cannot have variation in the gain because uh, some frequency sound will be higher and some frequency sound will be lower if you use Chebyshev. For audio application, uh, that uh, Butterworth would be good actually. So, it all depends on the application. I'll sh sure sa send the PPTs. Uh, any other queries? Uh, should one shake? You have any question? You can type it actually in the chat. You can type. I will answer. I couldn't hear your voice clearly. Yes, sir. I, I will. Talk. Ah, yes. Uh, generally, filter design will be more tough than antennas. As I said, uh, I can make antennas by trial and error, but the filter design is not so. How synthesis sir. microchip parameters? Okay. Tomorrow I'll demonstrate. So today I've given an overview. So tomorrow we need to find out the length and width of the microchip line. I'll show you which tool to use, how to do that. I'll completely design a filter and implement in with lump component as well as with uh, distributed components. Definitely that we'll be seeing tomorrow how we can synthesize the value of microchip line to implement uh, different values of capacitors and inductors. So tomorrow that will be the session actually, demonstration of uh, synthesizing micro circuits. Frequency selective surfaces, uh, I have not uh, prepared that, uh, but uh, later on uh, I will send you uh, in mail actually, what, what about that. So you are talking about that surface acoustic waves, right? So that is a different structure which can, which can behave like filters actually. So right now this uh, presentation will be focusing on micro planes. Maybe in the last uh, day we'll discuss about uh, frequency selective surfaces. Uh, what are the? That is what I told already uh, in the periodic structure. Yes. Uh, so that's a different uh, uh, kind. What we have discussed is one thing. That's a different class. So they used to say. Uh, saw filters. Um, I'll give an overview about that in the uh, last session. Okay. Okay. Uh, parameters mainly focus on filter is the uh, frequency, sir. Frequency, stop band, band uh, stop band uh, gain, attenuation band gain, transition band, how much you want. So all this will be considering tomorrow because tomorrow we are going to design. So I'll demonstrate what things uh, have to be considered, how to find it. Okay. Sir, one doubt, sir. Uh, Hello. Yes, yes. Sir, for uh, for uh, filter design, uh, for uh, microwave frequency, we are using only passive filter, sir. Only oh, yes, filters. definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, okay. Because uh, ICs uh, are not uh, used in that. Okay. okay, sir. Due to parasitic compound. Uh, if it is uh, within the IC, means they have to do with some active circuit actually. Right okay, sir. within the IC. Okay, so if you, if it is outside the structure, then it could be with passive. Okay, sir. thank you. Thank you. Today I'm ending my session, and tomorrow we'll uh, continue with the practical design exam. Thank
thank you all for attending. Bye -bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you.